Hello and welcome to Bite Sized MRCP, a manageable way to digest the things that you need to know for your MRCP exam. We are two junior doctors based in the UK who have passed all three parts of MRCP within the last five years and want to help you do the same. We are not associated with any MRCP examination organisations and the materials covered are by no means an exhaustive list of what can come up in your exam or indeed medical advice. Please refer to your college of entry or your friendly supervisor for further questions regarding the exam and syllabus. If you like the sound of what you hear today and would like to join us for more bite-sized revision, give us a thumbs up and press the subscribe button. Now, without further ado, let's get into today's topic. Which is influenza virus. So the influenza virus or flu has a global distribution with seasonal epidemics occurring annually. The World Health Organization estimates that this leads to approximately 290,000 to 650,000 deaths worldwide. The high risk groups in particular are young children, elderly adults, pregnant women and individuals with chronic illnesses including asthma or diabetes. Healthcare workers and carers are also at risk. There are three types of influenza, as we will talk about, but influenza A is the most virulent and most commonly linked to mortality. The influenza virus is transmitted via respiratory droplets from, for example, coughs or sneezes, as well as indirectly via surfaces contaminated with the virus. The influenza virus can evolve through mutations which are known as drift, and these are small mutations, with partial loss of herd immunity. However, they can also have more extensive changes by reassortment of the segmented genome, and this is known as shift, and this leads to complete loss of herd immunity. This then has the potential to cause pandemics, for example, when the disease crosses species from an avian host. So here we have a diagram of the influenza virus. Key things to note here is that it's an RNA virus, which is part of the orthomyxoviridae family. There are three sero groups, as we've discussed, A, B and C, which are responsible for human disease. If we look at the schematic, you'll notice that there is the neuraminidase enzyme, which is labelled, as well as the M2 protein. And these will come into importance when we talk about the management of flu. Influenza virus has an incubation period of approximately one to four days, although on average this is two days. Common symptoms which you will be familiar with are fever, which can be quite high, chills, myalgia, headache, sore throat, cough, which is often dry, as well as fatigue. Complications can occur, particularly in the immunosuppressed and vulnerable. For example, pneumonia, which can be a primary viral or a secondary bacterial pneumonia. Exacerbation of chronic medical conditions, so these are typically asthma or COPD. And it can also lead to ARDS as well. The diagnosis of flu is predominantly clinical, but it can be aided by a rise in antibody titers or direct immunofluorescence or viral culture. Diagnostic tests are most reliable if they are performed within 48 hours of symptom onset. The management of flu is symptomatic. Prophylaxis and treatment with amantadine, which is an M2 inhibitor, can be effective but is rarely used. There are also neuraminidase inhibitors such as ozeltamivir and zanamivir, which you may have heard of, being used in clinical practice. And these are really highly effective if started within 36 hours of symptoms. Prevention is predominantly via public health measures and vaccination. And for those of you working in the UK, for example, you may be aware of the annual flu vaccination program run by the NHS, particularly for for example, healthcare workers and for vulnerable populations. The annual vaccination program is very effective at preventing infection and reducing severity of infection. The types of vaccines available are an inactivated vaccine as well as the live attenuated version, which is a nasal spray. The vaccine is updated yearly based on circulating strains. Public health measures are those that you will be familiar with, including good respiratory hygiene, frequent hand washing and avoiding close contact with infected individuals during outbreaks. So let's try a question. A 45-year-old woman with a history of asthma presents to her GP for her annual asthma review. The physician discusses the important of vaccination to prevent influenza. Which of the following statements about the influenza vaccine is most accurate? The first option is the inactivated influenza vaccine can cause influenza illness because it contains live virus. The influenza vaccine is effective for at least five years without needing a booster. 
the live attenuated influenza vaccine is recommended for all adults, including those with asthma. The effectiveness of the influenza vaccine can vary each year depending on the circulating strains. Vaccination should be avoided in individuals who have had influenza in the past year. So I'll just give you a moment to think about that. So the correct answer in this case is D. The effectiveness of the influenza vaccine can vary each year depending on the circulating strains. And as we discussed, the vaccine is updated depending on which strains are circulating and most prevalent during a given season. Question two. Which of the following is the primary target of ozeltamivir and zanamivir in the treatment of influenza? So our options are hemagglutinin protein, viral RNA polymerase, neuraminidase enzyme, host cell receptors, or the viral envelope lipid bilayer. So if you just think back to the diagram of the influenza virus that we saw and discussed earlier in the video. So these two drugs are inhibitors of the neuraminidase enzyme. You will recall that we mentioned amantadine, which is sometimes also used, and that is an inhibitor of M2. Thank you for listening to this episode of Bite Sized MRCP. If you like what you've heard today, give us a thumbs up and hit the like and subscribe button below to make sure you don't miss our next episode. Let us know in the comments which topics you would like to hear in future. See you in our next episode.